Hello, good morning or good evening to everyone. Welcome to Mainframe Practical Tutorials. You're watching COBOL Practical Tutorials and today's topic is about working with the sequential file. So we, we are going to write a COBOL program using a sequential file and which is very very important. So, so far I have been covering uh, many different topics like search, search all, perform, perform wearing, perform until and various set of uh, programs I have been showing you. Today this topic is very very important. Why? Because it completely deals with the files. So you would be receiving a set of data in the form of files and where you need to read the data from that file you have to process and you have to do some calculations or you have to form some business logic and uh, get, the, uh, get the results stored into a, another file or just throw it into the spool or external hard disk and wherever you want. So. Oh, so that's the advantage of files. So this would this is very very important. Okay, understand it. So let's let's give me a brief introduction about file. What is exactly a file? File is nothing but file is a collection of uh, uh, records and columns. That is, uh, assume that this is a file. Okay, so file is nothing but it is a collection of rows and columns. So here each row, uh, each row is nothing. We are calling it as a record okay we are calling this as a record for example example consider this okay I will okay so we are calling this each row as a uh, record so in the same way we will make this as a field this is nothing but a field okay f i e l d so so this is as a field and this one is as called as a record so columns are represented as columns are called as a field and rows are called as a record in when we talk about the file how do you identify it? file is identified by its file name and the records are identified by its record name and the fields or the columns are identified by some column name so mainly working with the, the file so there are two process involved so that is uh, I mean there are two steps mainly involved nothing but a declaration of a file uh, a declaration of a file declaration of a file and next one is processing of file processing of a file when I say declaration of a file, so you have a file that is nothing but a PS file where actual data is stored. So you need to specify where that actual data is stored. That is a, that is nothing but you have to specify the particular DD name followed by the actual physical file name. Okay, so that comes under the de declaration of a file, and and at the same time, in declaration of a file you will have you will be writing few data you will be making use of environment section uh, sorry environment division and uh, a data division okay whereas processing of file is nothing but the actual business logic you will be uh, all the operation kinds of operations or calculations you will be doing it so processing is nothing but it, it will be coming in procedure division okay so these are the main two important points you need to remember so working with file mainly involves two steps that is declaration of a file and processing of a file so what is declaration of a file in declaration of a file file name and a device name is specified so how do we specify that file name a device name and a file structure you need to specify it right so for example i'm sh i'm considering this as a uh, file so the file is having a uh, five columns and 10 records so you need to give the structure of this file using a data division that is nothing but declare a variable or a file section and you have to specify what the properties it has and at the same time you are defining environment okay where the actual physical file is and what could be the DDN of those things and uh, in procedure division should be uh, you will be processing your file when I say processing of a file what do we do so what do we do with the uh, file so first what we what the first step will be like you will be opening a file okay and then you will be reading you will be reading a file or you will be writing a file 
or a deleting a file right and the same thing and at the end you will be closing a file so this would be the life cycle of a file so you need to open a file after opening you will be doing some operations like you'll be reading writing deleting or extending the record and so on so at the same time finally you will be closing that particular file so this is the life cycle of a file right so now uh, this was a little bit introduction about the file okay so that's what I'm uh, mentioning here like right uh, declaration of it has two steps that is declaration of a file and processing of a file so now let's go ahead and connect to the mainframe terminal and see how a program looks for the sequential file okay so you as usual you'll be giving your program description so kindly remember like uh, whenever you write a sequential file program so so far whatever uh, the videos I have covered about the basic tutorials that were all a simple uh, different kinds of statements like uh, uh, search search all perform perform until perform various and the paragraphs statements next verb continue go to if else logics and various various programs I have been covered right so those are the basic uh, uh, basic programs which is needed in order to work in order to create some complexity programs or real-time based bureau programs so once you are uh, free once you got clear about all these uh, functionalities or different kinds of verbs or statements we used so now uh, comes to the actual program this is the actual program uh, it starts here so you need to give your program clear description that is what it, what this program is doing it is trying to read a data from a student ps file and you are trying to display it on a spool okay and you have to specify the date written of this program and at the same time last update if anyone has updated who have whoever has updated this program so they will you'd be writing the pro last updated date and the programmer name and at the same time if if it is using any file name you have to specify that student with 80 bytes uh, any calls that is the sub programs I'm not using any sub programs so I'll specify as no sub programs if you're using any copy books you have to specify the copy book names that is actually it is not mandatory but it is good to mention all the things in a comment area so that whoever reads the program it will be easy for him to understand this and not only the other user whenever you look this new program whenever you uh, suppose you have developed some X program and so on so day so and it's been like a year after a review you got a uh, enhancement request to modify some program or layout of your report so if you have a clear description of this program and everything in the program so it is easy to easy for you to manage or easy for you to understand and you can quickly update your COBOL program if you're not specifying this uh, uh, comment section or just trying to write your program and uh, trying to specify all the entire logic over here sometimes you would be in a confusion and you'd, you you would stop uh, you would stop thinking or you would be in, in an imagine so what could be the logic or what happened so it would be you would be doing your program or you would be completing but it might take some large, of l large amount of time right so in order to avoid that complexity so better to give a description and uh, this the uh, I think this this the for this could be the this is one of the format I follow so I mean you can define your own format and you can use it accordingly okay so next uh, next thing is identification division so it, there will be no change the program ID as usual author name and next comes to the environment division as a set file is divided uh, has two steps that is declaration of a file and data division of a file so here we are going to declare a file see one thing so since we are dealing with the uh, external file that is uh, the file is somewhere located in a ps file and we are trying to read the data from the ps file right so it nothing but it creates it is the environment so you have to give it this in a environment division that is input output under input output section we have a uh, another uh, section called file control so in this file control since you are working with the files so it should be an output input output section and file control you have to specify your file name what you will be using in your program and the external file name that is uh, this would be the DD name in your JCL okay so you have to specify this 
so whenever uh, it reads student f then it will assign goes to this particular dd name and this particular dd name is associated with the actual physical file okay so you can assume that this is the logical file name and this is the data structure uh, the i mean the internal temporary data file okay and uh, next come to the data division and in data division you have a file section as i said earlier so file ha in order to work with the file you have to follow two steps that is declaration of a file and forcing of a file in declaration you have to follow two things that is environment division and a data division in environment division you're trying to declare a file control that is how do you what where exactly the physical file is allocated and you are mapping your file name with the dd name and dd name is connected to the actual physical file name okay now select student f so you need to define the structure of the student file right so in data division there is a, uh, a section called file section in file section you will be declaring your file structure so as i said uh, you have something called file okay you have a set of file in this file you there is a set of data information is stored so you need to give a structure of this file right so that's what i'm going to do is so, so i have a 80 bytes file so where it has a registered number registered name and age of a particular student I'm naming it as a student record. So student record is divided into a na register number, name, age, and extra. I am filling it as a using a filler class so that it will print a blanks. Okay. So the register number is of five bytes, name is of fifteen bytes, and uh, this is a, a var variable character, and uh, this is a numeric, and this is the numeric. Okay. So now in working storage section, I'm trying to declare a variable called end of the file. And the next in procedure division actual processing of the file happens so as I said here so the life cycle of a file is first what you need to do is you need to open your file right you need to open your file then you will specify open input uh, that is the which mode you are using so if you are re if you are uh, re just reading the data you have to specify it in an input mode okay input and uh, open input student f okay then next you have to read the para paragraph so what you need to do after opening a file the next step would be reading a file or writing or deleting so this particular program is about reading a file so i'm defining a separate paragraph for reading a file and for displaying a file i'm trying to define a separate paragraph so whenever it encounters these statements so it will goes to this particular paragraph and try to read until until ws e of e is equals to y so when this will be turned to y so you're trying to read the file at n okay let me show you the file how the file looks so this is your file okay copy okay paste it okay then you paste it just try to read it see this is my file so what was our COBOL program yes this is our COBOL program so here what we are what we are doing so we are specifying student of student and that will be mapped to the JCL and in uh, file section we are trying to declare a student record right so we are declaring three variables one is of with five bytes that is five and other is of 15 bytes then it should be 15 bytes then a last two fields next one is uh, age that is two bytes so this would come here and next is filled with fa58 that means all with the spaces the remaining so you can see this is of 80 bytes right so in this uh, you are trying to fill uh, these bytes okay so that once you declare a structure of your file now you, you you got an idea of idea or structure of this particular file so according to the structure you are defining your variables okay so first you have declared your prior file and now the declaration has been uh, completed that is a uh, file control has been done and the file structure has been given now you have to declare few variables that is uh, this is to control the end of the file 
and now comes to the procedure division where actual processing will happen so now we have a main para in main para we are trying to open the input open file in input mode so then I'm trying to create a paragraph called read para whenever it encounter read para it goes and read this particular file this file and if it comes the at end at end indicates that end of the record so if the, it doesn't point any records no records available so it will come to the at end statements and move y to end of the file so so that it will break it will come out of this loop and it will stop reading the file okay at end determines that you are end of the file so not at end if it is not at end since you are at first record what you have to do is perform display para so what you will do is you have to display a para display register number register name and this thing so it has to extract the data from this file and it has to display the same information whatever you have extracted from the file onto the spool so that's how uh, this display paragraph works so once it is encountered it goes back and uh, stops reading it okay not a trend okay so that's how a simple uh, COBOL program will look and uh, this is how you need to take it okay okay so now let me run this okay actually I have compiled this program so if you want me to compile I can compile it so sequential file right so CQFILE SEQFILE okay then submit it enter enter okay so it ended with my access is zero so now the program has been successfully compiled now you need to run your file okay now just close it so that if you keep it in edit mode so you 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 will not able to run this program okay so what I'm trying to show it here is you need to specify your program name, the load module and your file name okay how you are specifying your file name is very important so if you look at your program in environment division you are specifying your uh, logical file name connected to the physical file name so this is the DD name that should be mapped to a JCL so the same student is mapped here so whenever it, it enters select student we assign to student then it will go to this particular JCL in that particular JCL you have student and map it to the actual physical file so that's what we, we have seen okay then if you declare this file dis de description so it will read the properties I mean read the data inside the file and copy it into it okay then and here it will read the para and an audit and it will display it okay so now let me run this okay it ran good so how many files you have I think if we have around six so let's see if it has been read all the five six or seven records and it has been displayed wow super so now it has giving it has shown you results so register number register name student name age and so on so you can see you can see all the seven records are successfully displayed onto the spool if you want to write the same data into a separate file yes you can write it you have a another statement called write so with the help of write instead of displaying you can write you can give a write statement and then followed by a file name so for this also you need to declare your file name in environment section and you have to specify the same file name in JCL and you have to write write uh, records whatever you want to write it okay so that's how uh, that's how a simple COBOL program works for the sequential file so uh, this that's all for today's video so if you like this video kindly please subscribe share or comment on my youtube channel I will be coming up with more and more videos so stay tuned to mainframe practical tutorials thank you so much and have a great and pleasureful